Gods Obscura, a podcast dedicated to the lore, legends, and myths surrounding the creatures that may lurk in your backyard. My name's Hewitt. And I'm Chris. How you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. We've uh, we've had a day today. Yeah, we've set up an entire set. I mean, we do this like just about every Sunday that we run the game. Yeah, but I mean, most of the time we're we are recording from the uh, the set that is also my dining room. Yeah, I mean, you know, we got full time jobs. We can't. We're not critical role. We're not anything like that. But we do enjoy you know streaming our games. So we try to have a bit of a production value. And this time around, we have a battle cam. Like a proper battle cam. Usually it's like... Part of the DM's camera has been used to capture the battle map. But no, this one's like a full-on overhead view of the the environment. We got it all set up. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, things have been good over here. I mean, I say things have been good. This year has been one punch after the other financially, but... That was last year for me. Uh, but, I mean, things are starting to look good, and I'm happy about going camping. Yeah, that's next that's week. next week. Uh, we One reason we're probably recording more today than we intended to record is... Uh, yeah, I'm going to be editing more than I... Next week, we're going to be in Mississippi, yeah. Yeah. It, we're going to be doing the uh, back out back camping. Which is going to be interesting. Uh, not something we usually do. We haven't done it in a while. Usually we go to a campground. Yeah, I usually go to a campground. Uh, our friend Cannon, we used to camp on his property. Yeah, where we camped is now the foundation for his new home. Yeah. But even then, we had like an outhouse and everything. And But I was also going to say, this is, uh, by the time this comes out, we'll be surpassing 20 episodes of this podcast. Mm-hmm. So we're actually making some good headway. I say it like, you know, we we have an end point. I think we're just doing this until we get tired of it. We do have an end point when we actually find a cryptid. And then, we, well, we did find a cryptid, the, the bus druid. We, this is true, but we, we also enjoyed the bus druid. I'm saying like when we run into a cryptid that we're like, we didn't partially invent. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. All of a sudden we out in the woods and there's Mothman. We might be done. Well, speaking of Mothman, we're not talking about the Mothman. Are, actually, are there those glorious cheeks? Are those glorious cheeks? Them, them, uh, that that fucking peach down there. Did, did, did you know that you can actually receive a fifty dollars fine for putting a quarter on those cheeks? Really? People kept so, putting kept putting quarters at the top of the crack of of. I was about to say ass man, but Mothman's ass. I mean, don't make his ass so like luscious. Maybe think about don't, it. Don't like make the, it to where it's like, what did I hear in the woods? Oh no, that's the moth man. <laughs> He's too dummy thick. <laughs> they just keep slapping together. He's trying to give me a prophecy, but all I see is a prophetize. <laughs> Let's get off of that. Subject. Okay, so <laughs> getting into what we're actually talking about. Have you heard of the Hat Man? Uh, yes. Yes, I have. I believe I mentioned him when we talked about the uh, Kushma. Kushma. Yes. Spooky. Yeah. Spooky, uh, weird shadow person. Now, as with the Kushma, um, he is a shadow person. Or some something you see at like in sleep paralysis. However, there are some distinctions to make. Uh, one are the consistency of the reports across cultures and across the world. So he's, it is much like a sleep paralysis demon as a universal, or I should say global phenomenon. Yeah. The hat man is a very specific version of that that repeatedly yeah. shows up. Yeah. W- with shadow people, usually it's a non-distinct. Uh, like, as someone who's seen them. Yeah. yeah. Very much it's. It's a humanoid that seems yeah, blurred. It, it's just a shadowy silhouette of what looks to be a person sometimes. Well, the, the ones I saw had eyes. Yeah, usually they'll they'll have eyes, but uh, they're usually child size or childlike. Yeah, that's that's what made it creepy as shit. Yeah, but the Hat Man is different in the respect that like it's always like someone with the white brim hat, always with a trench coat, and just always. Much taller, than, regardless on on who you are, 
He's taller than you. Yeah. So it's so he looks like the stranger danger sign that used to be in the neighborhoods when we were growing up. That is like actually accurate because every time I look something up about the hat man, it's like, oh, it's just like the neighborhood watch sign. Uh, if Dude, you're, if, if the, you're, I don't know if they have those outside of America, but in America there's these neighborhood watch signs, and it always has a man, man with a white brim hat and looks a like, trench coat, high collared trench coat. Yeah, up to no good. But here's the deal. Could that be because of the Hat Man? I mean, that's a that's one of those theories out there that that image evokes something. But I'll get into that. Another key distinction between like the Kushma and Shadow People, I mean, somewhat with Shadow People, is their relation to drug culture. Mm. Now, the Kushma is mostly it's just a like a sleep paralysis demon, basically. Uh, there's a bunch of different types of sleep paralysis demons, the Kikamori and everything. But uh, the Hat Man and, and, to an extent, Shadow People have been kind of co opted not co-opted, but they kind of been memified by drug culture, in a way. In a specific type of drug, but we'll get into that. So, what is the Hat Man? Well, we already talked about it. A little, a little bit. bit. He, he's, he's a hallucination. He is a shadow person. And as the name suggests, you know, he wears his hat and trench coat. Uh, he is described as both featureless and also barely visible f- physical features. So, like, you might be able to make out, like, the coat, the lining of the coat or something like that. Or you might be able to discern where a nose or a mouth might be. But you never have, like, a distinct face. Uh, has had both white, red, and even black eyes, like void eyes. That, yeah. The hat man's behavior is similar to other shadow people and sleep paralysis entities, such as staying out of arm's reach within doorways, hallways, alcoves, closets, things from a distance, always from a distance watching you, never you can come and grab. Uh, sometimes in the corner of your eye. So, at, like, if you've ever seen, like, a shadow person, like... It's usually out of the corner of your eye. Yeah, you see, like, something running, and you look and you don't say anything. Uh, some accounts have people fl- have them floating above them in sleep paralysis. Ooh, that, that's very it, much like uh, the Kushma. Just... Yeah, it, it, that, that is the most Kushma it gets, but even then, he's not on you in the sense that he, he is not physically pressing down on you. Like the Kushmar, the Kikimori, like the Kikimori always is on your chest, like sitting on your chest, or sleep paralysis demon will be on your chest. He is just like floating above you. Uh, very rarely does he interact with you. Mostly he just stares from a distance. Uh, and as with many of these uh, sleep paralysis demons or sleep paralysis entities. His presence is often paired with anxiety and dread. So when you start seeing him, you're instantly filled with a sense of dread and just like utter despair at his presence. Now the difference is he is a more fully formed entity than what you would expect from like a shadow person. Right. Like, he has a, like, shadow people kind of, like, the way I've seen them, like, in sleep paralysis has always been kind of almost formless. Enough to have a silhouette, but not, but very... You can't make out fingers, you can't really... Yeah. Like, you know there's an arm when it moves away from the rest of the blur. Yeah, with the shadow man, or with the shadow man, with the hat man, like, crisp. Crisp, nice silhouette. Real 1950s business crisp. Yeah, yeah. On occasions, he will have conversations with people, though we will get into that because that's actually more related. There's actually, like, we can actually split up the Hat Man into two different types of encounters. And this goes into more of the drug-related. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes he checks a pocket watch. That's, like, one of the most often recorded things. He's mostly associated with shadow people. He does... Sh- share some similarities with other cryptids though he invokes the some sort of stranger danger like you were talking about yeah with it's the, it very much hold on does he share anything with the mothman 
Well, I was actually going to get into that because if you know about the Mothman lore, you know about Indra Cold, who is or the Smiling Man, uh, this figure that's in a nice coat and has a smile. He doesn't have a hat, but he kind of invokes the same sort of dread or same sort of anxiety as something like a Men in Black situation. And I'm not talking about the movie. I'm talking about, like, the entity of Men in Black. And I think this also kind of feeds into that because you're talking about... Like, with the Men in Black, it's, like, people that are, like, these well-dressed individuals that are... um, That seem to be from, like, this shadowy organization. Usually it associated with the American government, but it could be... (laughs) The government showed up. Oh, no. But I think it kind of like circles into that sort of well of thing. So yeah, Mothman definitely. And if you go into the, like the silhouette of the Mothman, you kind of have a similar thing. You have like the shadowy figure with red eyes. I can kind of see a little bit there. The silhouettes are different, but there's definitely like a connection. But none of them cheeks. None. Of the, I don't know if the Hat Man has some cheeks, although we will... You know what? Let's just keep moving. Uh, despite seeing a few reference of him encountered throughout the ages, I haven't seen much aside from like recent res- recollections. Even earliest ones are like the 1970s. I honestly believe that this means it's a recent concept. Like the Hat Man, like kind of like Slender Man. Slender Man is a very recent thing, and even though it's a known creepy pasta, like the, the Hat Man kind of has like the same vibes. It's yeah, like, came came out of like that era's version. Yeah, and the thing is, I this is what I'll say about the Hat Man. There are people that actually believe the Hat Man exists, and and as, as skeptical as we are, it is a different sort of thing as opposed to like a creepy pasta, which is. Like, it was created to be spooky. Yeah, it was created to be spooky. The Hat Man is, I think, a manifestation of, like, like, what an air... It's like Gray Men. We kind of see that as a manifestation of, like, fear or anxiety. And it kind of came into conceptualization recently because the 40s, 50s, 60s, you started seeing more people in suits, the hats. You saw, like, feds start wearing those and they're trying to be official but you also get a feeling of dread or concern if you're you're seeing some feds come up to your door and they're all decked out and everything um, well, even if the even if the fed is not decked up i'm going to be nervous of them walking up to my door anyway yeah but there is like an archetype there right but this is true but yeah like i was saying there are there are a few different ways we can talk about Hatman encounters. Uh, the first type is is the sleeping paralysis or sleep paralysis. There's the waking encounters, and then there's the drug related encounters. Now, the first two are kind of what you would expect from these encounters. Mm-hmm. Um, like waking encounters are some of the more rare ones, but they kind of fit into what you would expect from, like, a ghost encounter. Uh, For instance, one reported in the Topeka Capital Journal accounts of an encounter named from someone named Clark in the 90s. The then child was playing in the basement of his home with a friend when he saw a shadow in the alcove. Now, he felt the shadow was, like, you know, maybe something stacked up in a weird way Mm -hmm. until it started moving. Oh, that'd be creepy. Yeah, so he just saw something moving, a shadow... Hatman moving in the alcove. And, again, this is more of a ghostly encounter vibe. Like, I'm sure anyone who's had, like, a ghost story or has, quote, seen a ghost, whether you believe in ghosts or not, will report something similar to that. I mean, like, one of the most common things, other than the the, the 100% terrible issue known as orbs, shadow people are one of the most common ghost sightings. Yeah, and the thing is with shadows, they can assume a whole lot of different forms without really right. 
Like, you could actually, like, shadow puppets are a good example of, like, how you can manipulate shadows to look like just about anything, because you're really just looking at a silhouette. And, again, a lot of the the stuff I read were similar to that story, which is, you know, you see shadowy people at, at the corner of your eye, or you see, like, a shadow move or something like that. And, honestly, I don't think these stories would be as... Like, they would be as interesting if not for the Hat Man inclusion. He kind of just elevates the story a bit because of his lore. And again, with the uh, sleep paralysis, it's kind of the same thing. You see very similar instances of sleep paralysis uh, encounters as you would like any other creature. Uh, so the Hat Man, you, you're in a point of waking from sleep you're paralyzed and you see the hat man at the foot of your bed or in the hallway or something like that and you have that feeling of dread now as an experiencer of sleep paralysis very often i can say like in this context i have seen the hat man i, I talked about it a little bit on the uh one of the, the kushma the kushma episode where i was about 11 or 12 i had a very bad fever i had trouble sleeping I, I i had the flu I, I nearly went to the hospital and i woke up late at night and you know saw the hat man in the hallway the same sort of instance now i think it was just more delirium personally but you know it still was scary like the the instance is scary and any sort of instance of like sleep paralysis can be scary now i've had sleep paralysis where i'm like oh fuck this is trying to just get rid of it because I know what's happening. I'm like, okay, I'm going to get up and move around. And then you have those ones where you're like, fuck. Can't move at all. Like the can't, one, can't the one time it. I, the, the one time I really remember having it, having it, uh, I could not move <laughs> a muscle. Yeah. And then you have like the actual visions and everything or the hallucinations and everything that really fuck with you. But the biggest thing, I think that has elevated the hat man to kind of like a meme status and really boosted him into in internet infamy is his relation to drugs, which specifically diphenhydramine or DPH, which is the active ingredient in Benadryl. Now, so, so hold on. So the thing is, is here's the hat man. The response is drugs. Yeah. Hmm. To, to quote the meme. Yeah. And we're going to... We're going to have a thing at the beginning of this, but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to make sure, like, we don't endorse doing any sort of drugs. Uh, and we definitely do not endorse doing Benadryl. Benadryl is considered one of the... It's considered, like, I don't think it would pass FDA standards... Today. In, in terms of a drug, even for its therapeutic use. Uh, it can be very dangerous. It can have long-lasting effects. Uh, so if you care about... If you want to read about this stuff, that's cool. I mean, there are, like, trip reports online that are really interesting, but I wouldn't go and seek it. One of the main reasons is it's a class of drug called a deliriant. Now, you know what a hallucinogen is, right? Yes. A deliriant is a specific type of hallucinogen that can completely break you from reality. So, not only are you experiencing hallucinations, you are 100% believing they are real. Well, that's, I mean, the word delirium, that's pretty much its definition. Yeah. Like, you can have conversations with loved ones. Uh, you could be watching a TV show. You could see something outside this big event. Like, you could see a shootout. All these things could be happening. You could 100% believe they're happening. They're not. Uh, people who often take... Uh, People who often take DPH uh, recreationally, they can take it to a point to where they forget they even take the drugs, which is why it's super dangerous because people will be in that delirium state and take more and take more because they're like NOD. Yeah. Benadryl in rare cases is a drug that people hate taking. Now, okay, there are drugs out there that. People come to dis like if you talk to anyone who is recovering from drugs, they will say generally it was it could be a bad experience. 
like having to constantly take the drug. But usually you take a drug because you're searching for like that dopamine hit or you're trying to have that good feeling, right? Yeah. Benadryl's not like that. In fact, deliriants aren't like that. They're kind of like, I'm taking this drug. Oh, God. Everything's bad. You you will have, like, the worst trips. Like, apparently there are a few things that people like. Apparently phantom cigarettes is something people like on DPH or deliriants. But almost across the board, there's, like, negative experiences on DPH. Like, the the hallucinations you have aren't, like, you know, the fun, trippy shit. It's, like, your parents coming in and yelling at you and telling you what a horrible person you are before they just disappear. Or you see something like your dog get obliterated. It's, like, it's one of those drugs that's, like, you hear it described, it's like, why would you take this? But people do. And... Like, it has actually, not only do people take DPH, but it actually had become an internet phenomenon in the worst way possible in 2020 in a uh, TikTok and social media challenge called the Benadryl Challenge. And this is actually where the hat man comes circling back. Well, here's the deal is, um, it's a bad idea to do any TikTok challenge. Oh, no, no. It... Don't do any online challenge. Like, even the stuff that people, like, thought was funny, like the cinnamon challenge, that could actually be damaging. Negative. I mean, the number of people that seriously injured themselves in the ice bucket challenge. Yeah. Like, just, like, it, social media trends, like, people spread them around without really re- recognizing the dangers. But this one's especially dangerous because it's telling you to do, like, I'm not going to get into dosage, but it's a, a lot of, a lot of pills. In fact, in the uh, Benadryl challenge, there was a, I believe, let's see, a 13-year-old boy died and a 16-year-old girl died in 2020 because of this challenge. There was actually a um, story of, some, uh, I think, a 14-year-old girl that was doing the challenge and had long-term side effects, like weeks of delirium. Because of it. Yet, when I say this drug is no joke, it's really... Honestly, it should probably shouldn't be an over-the-counter drug if we're... And they shouldn't make a kid's edition. Yeah, they shouldn't make a kid's edition, definitely. Along with putting Benadryl at the forefront, it put the Hat Man at the forefront. Because the Hat Man, before this challenge, was already getting intertwined with DPH. Like, it, it had already kind of been, been a meme... Mm-hmm. But this challenge had brought the interest in DPH up, or at least the the lore behind DPH and uh, the Hat Man in general, uh, to a point to where you have all these spooky channels kind of covering it. You know, your Lazy Masquerades, the Shrouded Hands, people that are uh, horror channels that look into certain things like this. The difference that this makes, though, when it comes to talking about Hatman encounters, is that when I was reading through the drug trips and reading through some of the lore that was built through this, it really showed, like, the Hatman I know from all these stories I read about the Hatman. You hear, like, him being an interdimensional being, this time traveler, or this, uh, overlord of his own domain. You're just describing Henry Kissinger. It's Henry Kissinger. The hat man is Henry Kissinger. Except for why is he taller than everybody? Henry Kissinger is a wee little war criminal. I mean, in death, he can be what he wants. I guess. I mean, I'm hoping he's in hell. There's a special place for him. So I actually went to the DPH subreddit. and well, your, your, your internet search history is now ruined. Oh, yeah, I I was looking at that, and, you know, next time I go on Google, it's like, you can find help. I'm like, okay, I I wasn't looking for it for this reason, but there's, like, a bunch of fun accounts of the hat. Relative, okay, I gotta, like, we don't endorse drug use, but you gotta gotta find the humor in it where you can, right? Mm -hmm. Right? So, 
obviously, this is where most of the encounters with the hat man where you're talking with him, right? This is where uh, the hat man actually interacts with you. Uh, like, for instance, there is one user on the DPH subreddit stating that the hat man doesn't respect gender pronouns above a certain dosage and described that the hat man stood in a corner and telepathically misgendered them for five minutes straight after taking a certain dosage. Goddamn boomer. Yeah, I know, right? And another account, a user tr was trying to sexually encounter the hat man. What? They described their intentions with the hat man in graphic detail, which I'm not going to get into here. They wanted to do a bunch of DPH to have a sexual encounter with the hat man. Okay, look, there's there's people who want a Bigfoot, so, I mean... Yeah, yeah, it, it would... I mean, there were more than a few, like... I encountered the hat man, he get he slobbed on my knob sort of deal in in the DPH subreddit. So there were I, I, I would honestly be uh inclined to believe some of those were troll post. Uh but there were a few conversations in there. Some of them were just kind of like gibberishy conversations, like you know, something you would something that would be like what you would expect from a delirious state, someone trying to talk to something that isn't there, your brain just kind of firing off like weird things. But uh, other people had more mysterious or ominous uh, conversations. There's actually one big account in the DPH community that named the highest level you can go on DPH without, you know, completely overdosing. And this highest level is said to be like the hat man's domain in the DPH lore, so to speak. So there's a place called Ariel, like E-I-R-I-A-L, I believe. And this is supposedly the domain of the hat man and of all shadow people. Uh, there's actually like another subreddit, which I didn't get into, which talked about like a guy that actually supposedly worships the uh, hat man. And I'm like sitting here like, I hope this is all just like pulling a leg because I really don't want you like, you know, throwing your life away just doing high amounts of DPH. Well, if it exists, you can try to worship it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they have this whole sort of thing where um, some people try to reach this plane called Ariel. And I'm... Again, it's one of those things where you're like, it's interesting, but it's also like, I hope these people are doing okay. I hope they're, I hope they're getting help. Yeah, because <laughs> I'll be honest, this is starting to sound like, uh, like, remember back when we were kids in the '90s, and like people were just like hammering away at like uh, LSD, seeing if they could actually see Nirvana. Yeah, yeah. I mean. The thing is, there's a lot of... like, And, and I'm not going to, like, disparage people who do drugs or anything like that. Like, I don't... Like, I'm not going to disparage anyone, but, like, there was... There is, like, a culture of, like, upping the ante, so to speak, when it comes yeah. to drug use. Uh, which is... Can be very dangerous. And it, it is dangerous in this sense. So through this sort of idea of Ariel and, uh trying to reach this spot there has been kind of a religious reverence that came out of this but i don't know how much of that is just like memeing online versus people being serious i yeah, can only I, I can never tell anymore because i thought yeah. there was a whole lot of stuff yeah. that was memes and then it turned out to be uh i mean people really believed it that's the problem like especially if you've ever been on like 4chan or any of the chans nope uh, there's a lot of people that are just memeing and it turns out they're not really just memeing they're actually serious. But yeah, that's pretty much the Hat Man in a nutshell. Uh, there's a lot more information out there. I would suggest if you're interested in seeing that, uh, you can go see Cryptic Candy's uh, YouTube series on it. I also thank you to both Wikipedia and Cryptic Wiki about their articles on the Hat Man, Shadow People, DPH, Datura, Ripley's, My Haunted Life, The Hat Man Project, Know Your Meme, and Psychologist.com.
So, yeah, that's the hat man. You know, that is uh, a weird level of depressing and informative at the same time. Like, I'm, I'm going to say, because we've said this with a few different things. Mm. I'm going to go out on a limb and say the hat man's real just due to the number of people that have actually seen it doing this. Like, I, I would say it's real so far as to say it's probably a... A cycle. mass. Uh, well, the problem is, is this is why I'm going to say it's real. If it's a mass hallucination that's reported around the planet, not enough information really has been thrown out there in some cultures, I think, for this concept or this image of some to appear. Yeah. So, I don't know if there's an ancient fear or genetic fear or anything like that, but if that's being pulled up with this, or it might just be a really fucked up version of the Kushmaw. Yeah. I think, if anything, it's probably a. Uh psychological phenomenon you get into dream states and you get into like shared hallucinations and everything and you know it's an interesting subject but I'm, i think i'm going to go with occam's razor on this and just say it's probably just something we conceptualized like very recently but it's based on certain mechanisms that probably created uh other sort of shadow people or things like that that said i mean i've you know, I've had seen shadow people and everything. I mean, it can be freaky. It, it's weird. Yeah. It's, at, it's unsettling. At whether or not it's like a misfiring of the brain or if it's like an actual, like, entity. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this as much as you could. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's us, Backwoods Obscura. Uh, we have an episode out every Tuesday. Uh, we are on social media. Uh, but I have still not figured out how I'm going to use social media just yet. Uh, but if you want it, if you want to see us on social media, we're on Blue Sky, Facebook, and hopefully on Twitter sometime soon. Uh, we're on most podcatchers still trying to get on Apple. Their site sucks. I hate you, Apple. Is why I never use your phones. But we are also Team Bonus Action. If you want to, right. that. Uh, we are associated with Team Bonus Action, a charity tabletop group. Uh, that is currently partnered with St. Jude at the time of this recording. Uh, we play Monday, every other Wednesday, and Sundays uh, with D&D and Pathfinder, occasionally some other systems. We also have a few podcasts that happen every so often when we feel like it. Uh, but if you could come in and give us a watch or donate, preferably donate more than the watch, uh, we greatly appreciate it. You can find us at teambonusaction.com or on Facebook, Instagram, Threads, Blue Sky, uh, as Team Bonus Action, and find us on Twitter as bonus underscore team. And yeah, I uh, hope you have a good night, day, or whatever time it is. Have a good drive, have a good jog, biking, you know, hitting the gym, work those lats. Work those lats.